dime lo que hace sí <risa> no no este te iba a decir que yo te conté que me dieron la promoción verdad okay. so este te digo es porque van a poner como yo sé que ustedes estaban pendientes buscar una casa y qué sé yo este y queríamos mudarse ya para pa el próximo año para que estés pendiente este en la lo que es la página de casas reposadas del gobierno Excuse me. Excuse me. This is Yagami. Ah. Uh. 
You asked for it. Excuse me.
Hm? Excuse me.
Stay down. Tanoshikatta de gozaru yo! Kaito-san told me you'd be here. 
Don't forget about me next time, yeah? I wish you'd fucking forget about me. Is there a reason your little gang needs to keep meeting up here? It's so nice of you to let us use your store, Higashi-san. Especially when you're clearly so opposed to the idea. Don't talk down to Yakuza, kid. It's okay, Higashi-san. I think we all know you're nicer than you let on. What the hell? Damn, and you're braver than you look, Hoshino-kun. <laughs> Eso es verdad, aquí no tienen estamina, eso sigue corriendo y corriendo y corriendo y corriendo. No que yo nunca he tenido que usarlo. Bueno, ¿puedo llamar esta reunión a orden? Sí, voy a hacer los honores. Masamichi Shintani de la Genda Law Office ha sido muerto. Given that his eyes were gouged out, it's likely the mole was responsible. And I'll need all of your help to track him down. The ADDC, huh? Weird time for that to come up again. <laughs> again? It's come up before? We can talk about that later. What's important now is Shintani called them before he was killed. Hmm. I think I remember them being in the news a lot last year. Something about a new drug that could win a Nobel Prize. Yeah, here it is. The ADDC's research into AD9 has now been published in one of the world's leading scientific magazines. Leading to the gathering of reporters from both Japan and abroad that we have here today. It's a brand new dementia drug. They call it AD9. This was right after Director Kido from the ADDC published his paper on it. They're still undergoing clinical trials on larger animals, but apparently every single mouse they've given it to has made a full recovery. Now with the, the man giving the presentation here is Dr. Ryusuke Kido, a world leader in neurophysiology and the primary researcher on AD9. He's the one who showed me around the center when I was looking into Okubo's case. Guess he's been the director for a while now. From what I can tell, the Ministry of Health is increasing the ADDC's budget to hasten the development of AD9. They're even adding another building to the center. It's a huge project. <laughs> Damn good deal they've got. I'm still not getting it, though. Why Shintani go and call them? That's what we're about to find out. And there's only one way to do that. Come on! Can't just take a man's phone. First off, we'll need to figure out who Shintani was calling. Yeah, but how are we gonna do that over the phone? I suppose that all depends on your acting skills, Detective Yagami. <laughs> ADDC, front desk speaking. Hi there, ma'am. This is... This is Takayuki Yagami. I'm a lawyer from the Genda Law Office. Ah, hello there, Yagami-san. I'm calling about a lawyer named Shintani, who I believe contacted you yesterday. I was wondering if you could connect me with whoever he spoke to. Do you know the extension you wish to reach? Sorry, I don't. <clears throat> Why don't you just tell me what the call was about, and I'll connect you to the proper department. Oh, it was, uh... It was about the Shinpei Okubo incident. A patient of yours was murdered on site three years ago. You're not with the media, are you? Nope. I'm most certainly a lawyer. Why don't I connect you with our publicity department? They'll know more about what you're looking for. Sure. Please hold, sir. Doesn't sound like you're making much progress. Thank you for waiting. Uh, yes? It seems our publicity department never received a call from a Shintani-sama. I see. Thank you, anyway. 
<laughs> no way this happens over the phone. It'll be faster to just head over there myself. You think that's gonna work? Not sure, but I know the director, remember? Worst case scenario, I come back empty-handed. I'll come with you, Yagami-san. Okay. Me and Agashi will go check out what's going on with the Matsugane family. Shouldn't be tough with Hamura out of the picture. Hey, I don't remember saying I was gonna help you. By the way, Yagami-san, whatever happened to that guy from three years ago? Shinpei Okubo. He's in the detention center. Been there since they gave him his death sentence. Have you ever gone to see him, Yagami-san? No. Why would I? Why do you ask, anyway? <laughs> I don't know. I was wondering what he was like. The case got tons of news coverage, you know. I was also wondering what you thought about the case. I mean, did you really think that he was innocent? Probably. But then he walked. He killed his girlfriend. You defended him for that too, yeah? Yeah. Did you believe him then too? He kept saying the same thing. How he could never have killed anyone. But... I didn't believe him, no. Fighting for him in court made me sick to my stomach. Do you think he deserves the death penalty? That's enough of the question, Sugiura. <laughs> Woof. My bad. <laughs> Was that too far? <laughs> nah. If you say so. Um... Yagami-san? You're heading to the ADDC now, yes? I'm gonna grab a taxi for us. I'll wait for you over on Park Boulevard. The ADDC, huh? This has gotta be fate or something. Over here, Yagami-san. I have a taxi for us. I've heard a bit about this place before, but the ADDC, isn't it just one part of a larger organization? If I recall correctly, they call it the Medical Institute. Is that accurate? <laughs> yeah. They own every last inch of this campus. <sighs> it's incredible. Even with all these buildings, they're still getting budget to expand from that new drug. So? Is it the same as you remember? Yeah. Huh? Don't go too far ahead! Yagami-san!
What are you all shaken up for? Calm down. Just stick with me and you'll be fine. Got that, Yagami? Yagami-san! Try not to just ditch me, okay? Is something wrong? It's just... After three years, it still looks the same. Huh? Almost like time itself has stopped. Yagami-san. Come on. Front desk's over there. Do you have an appointment? I don't, sorry. My name is Hoshino, from the Genda Law Office. This is my partner, Yagami. We're here to talk about a murder that took place in Kamurocho yesterday. A, a murder? A co-worker of ours named Shintani. He was the victim. We have a record that he called this center before he was killed. Huh? We're hoping you can help us track down exactly who he spoke to. I'm very sorry, sir, but I can't provide such private information. Well, could I at least talk to Director Kido instead? He's an old friend of mine. Just let him know Yagami stopped by to say hello. Uh, I don't think that'll be necessary. Look over there. Gentlemen, I really don't know what else you want from me. I have nothing more to say. I've told the police all that I know. Yeah, I know. Sorry about all this, Director. Problem is, my partner here won't give it a rest till he sees the scene of the crime. But I'm sure we'll be leaving soon. Well, that's not what we agreed upon. You know this isn't about how long it takes. And what about Okubo? I take it he's still not fessed up? Uh, no. Not quite as of yet, sir. But we all saw where the body was. Exactly where he said it would be. Quite true. Not much point in fighting this now. The Minister has made it clear that he wants it resolved soon as well. Just look at how much trouble one contractor has caused. Sorry, which minister? I didn't know about this, sir. The health minister. It's all his call how much funding we get. The director, if I may, if you would just direct me to the scene of the crime, I could head over there myself. I'll be out of your hair in no time, I assure you. I'd rather you didn't wander on your own. So instead, she can show you. Terasawa-kun, these gentlemen here are Shintani-sensei and, uh, Yagami. It's a pleasure. I hope I can help you find what you need. Well, with that, I'll be taking my leave. Thank you again, Director. Apologies for all the trouble. This way. I can show you how to get to Wakusan's room. Who's Wakusan? The guy who died in his room? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And you are... Terasawa-san, huh? Wow, you're young. And a looker to boot. Um, can we keep this professional? Huh? Nice try, Shintani-sensei.
Not the friendliest girl in town, huh? Well, we're not exactly welcome guests here. After I busted my ass to pass the bar, I always figured I'd have my pick of the ladies. Right this way, please. Straight ahead is the ADDC's general ward. Waku-san's room is on the fourth floor. This was the room assigned to Wakusan. What's down there? That's the research wing, where they develop all our new drugs. Oh. You can't get in without a gold key card, though. Not even I have one. <laughs> gold, huh? I suppose because it's the heart of the center's operations. Huh. <laughs> Sounds like it's a whole nother world back there. Security like that must be a bitch. Come on, Yagami. Before he died, Wakusan spent most of his time in here. And when was he admitted? Two years ago. With Alzheimer's. Some kind of dementia, right? Alzheimer's is a neurodegenerative disease that leads to dementia, yes. In fact, it's the cause of almost 70% of all dementia cases. So, they're one and the same, kinda? Anyway, do what you gotta do, Yagami. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maldito gato. Uh -huh. What the? Suspicious. What the? Has anyone else slept here since Wakusan's death? Nobody. No. And Wakusan was missing from his room the morning of the incident, yes? That's right. So, he was murdered here, then carried out. I can't say for sure. But it's likely. Hey. What the? The window sealed shut. There's no way Wakusan could have escaped through here.
suspicious. All the rooms have windows like this, right? It seems like people would notice if something was going on in here. Well, we only have so many employees in this ward. The halls stay fairly busy, but it's mostly dementia patients moving between appointments. I see. I wonder how the room looks from the hallway. You got all you need from here, yeah? I think so. Hmm, you can definitely see what's going on from out here. Shintani Sensei, can you lay on the bed for me? Uh, I guess so. Care to join me, Terasawa san? What do you got to lose? It was a joke! So, from this vantage point, you can't make out the person's face. So, was this the colossal waste of time I knew it'd be? Nope. I got something I'd only get from being here. Does it matter? It's been days. Case is practically closed. Shinpei Okubo is guilty as hell. Well, according to him, he's not. Well, of course that's what he says. Consider the facts, though, man. You want to review the case? Sure. Let's go over what we know so far. Whatever you want. All right, here we go. Our victim was the patient staying in this room. Koichi Waku, male, age 66. At 8.30 a.m. on the morning of the crime, the nurses noticed he was missing from his bed. Given Waku's degenerative state, they assumed he was wandering around the hospital somewhere. But after being unable to track him down, hospital staff filed a missing persons report. Right. You know what a dementia patient's like, though. Hard to imagine they'd make it outside on their own. The only conclusion, then, was that somebody must have taken him out of the hospital. After inspecting all the cars that came in and out of the center, they were left with one possible suspect. A laundry man by the name of Shinpei Okubo. It didn't take much prodding for Okubo to confess, burying Waku's body out in the mountains. And lo and behold, three months after Waku disappeared, the cops found his body rotting away right where Okubo said it'd be. Cause of death was most likely suffocation, but they still don't know for sure. Any objections to this so far, Yagami-sensei? Actually, yeah. You're forgetting something. And what's that? Okubo-kun insists he didn't kill anyone. All he admits to is dumping the body. Oh, sure. But come on, Yagami. Guy's got a history of assault, and it's on record. Roughed up his girlfriend, accidentally broke her finger. Right, but that was over six years ago. He was just a kid. Got drunk, made a huge mistake. And what? It's okay for a kid to hit a woman? Of course not. But that's not what he's on trial for. True. I don't condone what he did. But legally, committing one crime doesn't mean you're guilty of another. Fine. But what about Okubo's shaky alibi? He said he left the center at 10 a.m. after grabbing the sheets from the general war. Claimed Waku-san's corpse somehow got loaded into his truck. <laughs> Who's gonna believe garbage like that? If anyone should, it's his lawyers. Huh. We're meeting with Okubo after this, right? You should just be honest with him. Tell him the case is unwinnable. Are you two done here? Yep. Can you show us the garage next? The one where Okubo-kun parked his truck. The service entrance, I think it was. That's the only other place we'll need to see today. We'll need to take an elevator down there. Follow me.
follow me. Yagami, you're never gonna last if you keep taking cases like this. Criminal suits are a constant test of your conviction, your sense of justice. They don't even pay that well. Careful who you say that around. Look, just chill out, okay? Take it from me. I've been around the block way longer than you have. Like a regular old garage to me. Hmm. You'd make it out with no problem if you put a body into your truck down here. It's quiet. It is. Hey, Yagami, check this out. These are the carts they used to collect sheets and linens. Day of the crime, Okubo was all over the hospital with one of these things. It would have been simple for him to sneak a body in there and cart it right out. Maybe so. Where was Okubo parked on the day of the incident? Oh, um... The truck was parked here, with the back facing the elevator. Here's a recreation of it. I see. DNA evidence from the victim was found in the flatbed of the truck. That's proof enough that the body was there. And when they confronted Okubo, he flat out admitted it. There was evidence that the body was in Okubo's truck. When was Wakusan last seen? Just before 8 a.m. on the day of the crime. Yeah, 7.50 to be precise. An ADDC scientist will be testifying to that. He claims he saw him nice and cozy in his bed. I see. Can we talk to this witness? I tried to get an appointment, but they shut me down. Said they don't want us interfering with their research anymore. They're not willing to make an exception this once? This isn't an issue you want to push, Yagami. Worst case scenario, you get charged with witness intimidation. All right, all right. Anyway, the victim was last seen at 7.50. That's right. Breakfast is at 8 o'clock, so the patients who can walk on their own gather in the break room. But on the day of his disappearance, 8.30 came and went with no sign of Wakusan. You thought you'd find him quickly. Didn't exactly turn out that way. Right. Got that, Yagami? Here, let's go over some more details. All we know is, Waku was taken out of his room sometime between 7.50 when he was last seen, and 8.30 when everyone noticed he was gone. During that 40-minute span, Somebody suffocated Waku and stuffed him into the laundry bin. Nobody suspected there was a body in the cart. 
and the only clear culprit was Okubo, the man in charge of the laundry. To further back this up, DNA evidence from Waku was found in Okubo's truck. Then when the police questioned Okubo, he confessed to burying the body in the mountains of Okutama. Three months after the crime, Waku's corpse was finally found. With me? This thing's airtight, Yagami. I know you're getting into this, but come on. Just give it up already. You don't have a chance. Even though Okubo says he's innocent, I promised him we'd do everything we could. Not my problem. You shouldn't make promises you can't keep. <sighs> Fine, then I'll do it alone. You don't have to be involved. Even if I'm not, the loss will hurt Genda-sensei's reputation. I'm sorry, but our client says he's innocent. I can't back down from this. Ah, fine. I'll be in the lobby. Um, if you like, I could take you to see Wakusan's room again. You don't mind? Oh, that would be great. Wakusan was here until the morning of the incident. Then he just up and disappeared. The window sealed shut. There's no way Wakusan could have escaped through here. Um, are you finished? Not yet. I wonder how well you can see in here from the hallway. Um, are you... F Not yet. Just a little longer. Um... Yeah, I've seen what I need. Anything else you can share? How long will Okubo-san's sentence be? Huh? If he's found guilty, that is. Probably ten years, maybe more. It's hard to say for sure. And what if he confesses? Would they shorten his sentence? Well, at the very least, it would make a better impression than insisting he didn't do it. But you're still going to push an innocent plea? Even though Okubo-san is the one who'll suffer for it? If he's really not guilty, he won't have to. I'll win. But to be perfectly honest, this is my first criminal case. What? Civil cases have been a mixed bag for me, too. I've actually lost more than I've won. Is that so? Apparently, a smart lawyer would never even consider an innocent plea in this case. Guess it's a good thing that I'm not so smart then, because I honestly believe I can win. Terasawa-san, were you close to Okubo-kun? I spoke to him pretty often, yes. I would see him around the ward all the time. And what did you think of him? Did he seem like the kind of guy who'd do something like this? I'm sorry. The director told us not to say too much. Wait! If you know anything that can help, just get in touch, okay? I'll do whatever it takes to set Okubo-kun free. But I can't do it alone. Just... give it some thought, Terasawa-san. Just now... we went to the ADDC. Thought I should have a look at things with my own eyes. And? How did it go? 
There's no chance you walk. You're practically a lost cause. Hey. Yagami-sensei, is that what you think? It's like this, Okubo. You tell me you're innocent, and I'll fight to the end. I really have nothing to lose by helping you out. It's just like I told you. Whoever did it is framing me. On the day of the crime, you were in the general war of the ADDC, yes? Starting at 8 a.m., you went around to each room and gathered the linens. Yes. Nobody would dispute that. And after that, you covered Wakusan's nose and mouth, suffocated him, and then carted him out in the laundry bin. That's not true. Wakusan wasn't there when I went into his room. I didn't see him at all that day. You have to believe me. And I do. So when you went down to leave the center at 10 a.m. after gathering the linens, you realized there was a body hidden in the truck. Yes. That's what happened. Then, after debating whether or not to report the body, you chose to hide it in the mountains. I had a criminal assault on my record. I knew the police would have suspected me if I went to them. Aren't you forgetting the bad blood you had with Wakusan? Huh? Bad blood? What are you talking about? Three days before the murder, Wakusan claimed Okubo-kun here punched him and stole his wallet. They told me all about it at the center. When did you even ask? While you were busy chatting up Terasawa-chan. <laughs> Even if I bitch about it, I'm still damn good at my job. Well, Okobo-kun, did you take his wallet, or...? Not quite. They call it delusion of theft. It's a symptom of dementia. You think something's been stolen from you, then blame the first person you see. Not the easiest thing to deal with, right? Someone accuses you of theft for no reason? Must have been a shock. So when Wakusan tried to hit you, you just about hit him back. But I didn't hit him. No. You murdered him. I wouldn't kill a man over something like that. Ah. I wish I could believe you, pal. Come on, Okobo-kun. You've got a record of violence. It wasn't me. I swear. Somebody set me up. Please, you have to believe me. Whoever did this is laughing at all of us right now! Calm down. Yagami-sensei... Do you believe me? I do. Okay. The next time... Come alone. Fine. I can take a hint. You and Yagami-sensei can cuddle up all you want. Hey, you know that nurse, Terasawa-san? Cute girl. It sounded like she was worried about you. Bet you'd have a chance with her once you get out of here. I don't know. If you'll excuse me. So Shintani just left you hanging, huh? He's got to learn some damn patience. Maybe so. But this is my case now. I can handle it myself. Huh. Okay. Yagami-san. Hmm? Have you seen Mafia lately? Well, where's this coming from? She's just not that great with men. 
I suggest you be more assertive. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, you mean that friend of yours, Saurikun? She's got Shintani all riled up. Said he'd have been nicer to you if he knew you had friends who looked like her. <laughs> Jackass. Hey, nothing's official yet, guys. Regardless, keep it on the down low, okay? Yet? That word says more than you think. <laughs> Mafia Kuhn's a prosecutor, right? Isn't it kind of taboo for her to date a defense attorney? Can we not do this? Either way, guess the Okobo case comes first. We're pleading innocent, yeah? That's the plan. What is your plan here? This isn't gonna be an easy win. Well, I'm working on that. There's one piece of evidence that still bothers me. Yeah? And what's that? This is Wakusan, the victim. Suffocation is the apparent cause of death. They still haven't nailed it down conclusively. As for his body, it was found buried in the mountains of Okutama. And Okubo's the one who told him where it was, right? As I've seen, he's admitted to that much, at least. Yes, but he insists he didn't commit the murder. Maybe so. But you're gonna need evidence if you want to prove it. They find anything on the body? Maybe something that give our man an alibi? No, nothing like that. Well, that's a shame. Well, that's not my point, though. The evidence I showed you is... That evidence won't win you the case. What the hell's your problem? Was that Shintani? I think so. Get back here! <laughs> that bastard. Oh, it's eavesdropping on you. What the hell? Uh, I tried to stop him, but... Uh, he pulled a stun gun on me. Uh, uh. Hey! Wait up! You won't get away!
You won't get away. Woman. Help! Someone help me! Aren't you Terasawa-san? Let me go! We got a groper out here? Scum of the earth! <laughs> Not on my watch, you son of a bitch! Can all lawyers fight like that? Did you really need to run away like that? I assume you came to see me. There was something I wanted to talk to you about, yes. But I wasn't sure if I should. Then that pig-headed friend of yours started shouting, so I just lost it. Okay, but did you have to tase him? Not that he didn't have it coming. Anyway, I'm listening if you want to talk. No matter what it is, I'll keep your secret. Anything you tell me will fall under client attorney privilege. Well, you know the witness who last saw Wakusan? Said he saw him sleeping in his bed. Uh-huh. Well, that witness is a man by the name of Shonosan. He's one of the scientists at the ADDC. Not only that, but he's the director's right-hand man, too. And this is him? Yes. He's a very dedicated doctor, so the nurses have a lot of faith in him. But something felt off when I heard what he had to say about the incident. And what's that? I guess I'm just skeptical as to whether or not he actually saw Wakusan. I don't think he's intentionally deceiving us, but he may be mistaken somehow. And if I had to guess, I'd say the other nurses feel the same. Still, why hasn't anyone mentioned this until now? How could we? Nurses talking about a doctor behind his back? That's not something a nurse could do without consequences. And if it came to a courtroom testimony... None of you would testify? 
Maybe the other nurses wouldn't, but I would. I never really fit in over there anyway. Besides... Yeah? I think Okubo-san is innocent. Oh, really? Sounds like I've finally got an ally on my team. I'm currently employed as a researcher at the Advanced Drug Development Center. Part of our research consists of clinical tests we perform on patients in the general ward of the center. On the day of the crime, I was making my usual rounds through the ward. And what time was that? Around 7.50. You're sure? Yes. The patients eat breakfast at precisely 8 o'clock. I always head to the break room myself, uh, right around then, too. This break room, to be precise? That's correct. Our more mobile patients walk there for breakfast instead of eating in their own rooms. Then, while the nurses help the patients eat, I ask about how they feel and how the medicine is treating them. And on the day of Wakusan's disappearance, you pass by his room before going to the break room? Yes. And in that room, you saw Wakusan lying on the bed? Yes. Can you describe the situation to us as you remember it? The door has a window, so you can see into the room from the hallway. And this is the room you're referring to, yes? That's correct. From where I was standing in the hallway, I could see Waku-san lying in bed. He was asleep, with a blanket covering most of his body. And what time was that? Around 7.50. No further questions. <sighs> Yagami-sensei. Why did you call her to the stand? She actually asked to testify. Is that a problem? Not really, no. Terasawa-san, you were present for Shono-san's testimony just now, yes? Yes. And what is your opinion on that testimony? For a scientist, I felt his wording was rather imprecise. And as a medical professional, I felt his actions were negligent. Could I ask you to be a little more specific? Our witness, Shono-san, claims he saw Waku-san sleeping in his bed during his morning rounds. However, there's no way he could have known that just by looking in from the hallway. I have evidence supporting Terasawa-san's testimony. Please look at this. It's a photograph of the victim's room as viewed from the hallway. In other words, this is what Shono-san would have seen when he checked in on Waku-san. Shono-san was lying when he said he saw Waku-san in the bed. Excuse me? What he saw from the door was likely nothing more than a bulge of sheets. He couldn't have been able to identify it specifically as Wakusan. So to claim as much in his testimony seems like quite an exaggeration, don't you think? But common sense would dictate otherwise, would it not? Who would be in the bed other than Wakusan? The staff nurses are trained to always enter a room when checking in on a patient. In Wakusan's case, it's impossible to tell anything just by looking in from the hallway. There was actually one time a while back where we thought he was under the covers, only to find Wakusan eating in the break room a second later. 
And upon re-examining the room, we realized that we had mistaken a bunched-up pillow for Wakusan. The witness makes an important distinction. The prosecution asserts that Shono-san's testimony is clear. That the victim was taken out of his room at some point between 7.50 and 8.30 in the morning. They claim that because of this time frame, the defendant must have smuggled Wakusan's body out in his laundry bin. But if Shono-san's testimony is invalid, as the defense asserts, we have to consider the possibility that Wakusan was taken in the middle of the night when nobody else was around. After which, the killer could have waited until the morning to plant the body in the defendant's truck. In other words, the defense establishes that there is reasonable doubt that Okubo-san is the killer, rendering the prosecution's central argument unsound. Your Honor, taking this new testimony into account, I'd like to call Shono-san back to the stand for cross-examination. Shono-san. Yes? I'll get right to the point. On the day of the crime, what did you see when you looked into Wakusan's room? I saw Wakusan asleep in his bed, I think. And did you get a clear look at his face? I don't remember. So it's possible that it could have been someone other than Wakusan in that bed. Or maybe even a pillow that you mistook to be Wakusan's body. Isn't that right? Objection! The defense is leading the witness. Sustained. Please rephrase the question. Shono-san, can you say without a doubt that Wakusan was in that bed when you checked on him? I... I, I don't think I can, no. Then the defense rests. But I do have a quick remark for the prosecution. Huh? The charges against my client stem from your assertion that he's the only possible suspect, assuming the crime took place within the stated time frame. However, the defense has proven without a doubt that Shono-san's testimony is unreliable, establishing reasonable doubt for my client. I would suggest, then, that you withdraw the charges against my client. With such inconclusive evidence, you'll only be wasting the court's precious time. The prosecution does not consider the witness's testimony inconclusive. His memory of the incident may be fuzzy, yes, but that doesn't change that he saw the victim. So, your whole case is based on a fuzzy memory? This promising young man's future is at stake, and you're willing to throw that away on unreliable testimony? Dr. Shono is a bright and diligent researcher. After watching his own grandmother develop dementia, he vowed to create a drug that could cure the disease. After paying his own way through medical school, he went on to become the head researcher at the ADDC. Day after day, Dr. Shono visits his sick patients out of the kindness of his heart, leading to his valiant testimony here today. If you want to know whether I trust this man, then my answer is a resounding yes. In other words, because he's such a great researcher, his testimony is infallible. His own admission that he's not sure is somehow overlooked? Is that the sum of it? <sighs> because from here, it sounds like you're putting your faith in Shono-san's title, not his testimony today. The prosecution is not as easily swayed as you think. And you want to talk reputation? What of your client's history of domestic abuse? Six years ago, the defendant broke his girlfriend's finger. The poor girl is still suffering from the effects. And the cause? A minor, drunken disagreement. Now, fast forward to what occurred a few days prior to the crime. Wakusan, suspecting the defendant of stealing his wallet, lashed out and punched the defendant in the face. Given the clearly violent nature of Okubo-san here, that alone would be motivation enough to murder the poor old. Is something wrong, ma'am? Please remain seated while court is in session.
Terasawa-san? Okubo-san is not a violent person. And he hasn't even had a drink in over six years. Not a single drop since the incident. My court will not stand for this commotion. He didn't blame Wakusan at all. He knew that the outburst was just caused by his dementia. That it was all the sickness's fault. So there was no reason for him to resort to murder. Terasawa-san, please. Okubo-san really is an incredible, caring person. Please leave this courtroom at once. You're right that he may be hard to approach, but he's a kind soul, and he always keeps his promises. Okubo-san's not the only person in this courtroom who would be affected by a guilty verdict, either. As a matter of fact, it would break my heart. And even through it all, he wanted me to keep this a secret, not to tell anyone, not even his lawyer, that we were dating. outburst wasn't technically admissible, but as the trial dragged on, it hung over the jury like a stone. And in the end, Shinpei Okubo was found not guilty. But only a month after his release, everything changed. The same girl who had so bravely proclaimed Okubo's innocence died by the man's own hand. Something wrong? No, it's nothing, Vice Minister. But... I haven't seen you in about three years, Kido-san. I see you're still the director. You look familiar, but... I seem to have to revise it again to confirm it. I seem to have to call you the director. I'm a detective based in Kamurocho now. The name's Yagami. I remember now. You're the reason Terasawa-kun's no longer with us. Remember, Shono? Okubo-san was unstoppable. If only my testimony had been better. Shono-san, right? Does it matter? What brings you here, anyway? I'm investigating a murder. And I'll need your cooperation with it. Just like old times. Yes, I see. Yes, thank you. It does seem we received a phone call from this Shintani-san you speak of. Do you know who he was calling? Dr. Shona. The same Shono-san you were just with? Yes, however, it's unclear as to what the point of the call was meant to be. Shono was away from his desk at the time, you see, and Shintani-san didn't leave a message. You have no idea what he wanted to talk about? None. Shono says he doesn't know a Shintani-san, and sees no reason why he would be calling. Oh, really? <sighs> Look, Shono and I co-authored the research paper on AD-9. We're quite well known, as it turns out. Sometimes, complete strangers pretend to be close friends or relatives in order to contact us. Perhaps Shintani-san fell into that category. Have you heard of the mole murders taking place in Kamurocho, Dr. Kido? Three Yakuza, each one with their eyes gouged out. It's a grisly business. Shintani was killed in the same way. I've seen the news. 
Can you think of anything tying the ADDC to those murders? Huh? Look, just what are you implying? Look, I believe we're done here. There's nothing I can help you with. Please stop! You can't! Who are you? Detective Kuroiwa, Kamuro Police, organized crime. One of your guests here has information related to the case I'm currently investigating. That would be you, Yagami. Hmm? I'd like to speak to you as a material witness to the murder of the lawyer, Masamichi Shintani. Is that so? latest victim was the lawyer, Shintani. The last call he made brings the case that ruined Yagami three years ago back to the surface. A patient was taken from a hospital and found buried in the mountains. Yagami defended the suspect, Shinpei Okubo, and got an acquittal. But one month later, he murdered his girlfriend, Emi Terasawa, with a kitchen knife and burned the remains. I'd like to speak to you as a material witness to the murder of the lawyer, Masamichi Shintani. Is that so? I'm Hoshino, an attorney at Genda Law Office. Officer, is this interview voluntary, or...? It is. It's your call, Yagami-san. I think I'll pass. Excuse me? You have your answer, sir. You can go now. You can make this easier if you come now. Next time, it won't be voluntary. Your empty threats don't mean much to a lawyer. Can you take this elsewhere? I really must be... Too bad he's not a lawyer anymore, then. Your friend's nothing now. Just come along quietly. I'll come back with a warrant if I have to. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Why do you suspect me, anyway? I bet you don't even have a reason. I can come up with a few good ones. Enough! Get the hell out of my office. You'll regret this, Yagami. Kuroiwa-san. <sighs> you two, out. Before we go, can we speak to Shono-san for a sec? We need to know why Shintani called him. Listen, I already told you he doesn't know. Get it through your skull. Now, please leave. No problem. We'll let you get back to work. This is really getting out of hand, don't you think? I can't believe that detective thinks you're a material witness. Yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. But what I'm more interested in is how he even knew where to find me. That's a good point. How would the police know we were here? Beats me. For now, let's focus on Shono, though. It would be a waste coming here and not talking to him. Agreed. Let's see if the receptionist can help us. Can I help you? Actually, I've already been here. I was just with Director Kido, remember? Um, oh, of course. Did you forget something, sir? Well, not exactly. I'd actually like to speak to Shono-san, the 89 researcher. Where would I be able to find him? Let me see. Uh, that should be the research wing. I believe he's in the Protein Abnormalities Lab. 
probably need a gold keycard to get in there, huh? That's correct, sir. I should be able to lend you one with the director's approval, though. Just give me a moment to ask. Could you tell me your name, sir? Actually, uh, never mind. Kido-san seemed pretty busy earlier. I'll try back later. Are you sure, sir? Good call. There's no chance Kido-san would let us in. At least now we know where Shono is. Yeah. I wonder if there's a map around here somewhere. What the? The service entrance parking lot. All the delivery people come in and out through here. This is where Okubo's truck was parked three years ago. Hmm. This leads to the research wing. The receptionist said he would be in the protein abnormalities lab, right? Huh. Well, I guess that's not on this map. Hmm. Hey. This goes over to the hospital. I think Wakusan was up on the fourth floor. Suspicious. The service entrance parking lot. All the delivery people come in and out through here. This is where Okubo's truck was parked three years ago. Hey. Director Kido's office. We were just in there. Kind of security gate, huh? The research wing must be just past there. Hey. Hmm? This is where we are now, the ADDC lobby. Um, excuse me. Yes, ma'am. This is one of Shono-san's researchers. She was just about to return to the lab. Oh? My name's Hashimoto. I can show you into Dr. Shono's lab if you'd like. Are you sure? Of course. <laughs> Great. We'll take you up on that. Wonderful. Hashimoto-san just happened to be passing through. Thank you. Right this way. I really appreciate this, Hashimoto-san. I'm Yagami. And I'm Hoshino, from the Genda Law Office. Thank you for doing this. Oh, don't mention it. I'm glad to help a guest of Director Kido's. This place is so massive, you practically need a tour guide to get around. I hope you're okay with walking. Oh, that's totally okay. Oh, uh, bye. So, Hashimoto-san, what kind of work do you yourself do here? I'm part of the team developing 89. Dr. Shono is the head of that team, but I'm pretty new around here. Speaking of, what exactly does AD9 stand for? Well, the AD comes from the name of the center. The Advanced Drug Development Center, ADDC. And it's the ninth drug our department's developed. Oh, that was surprisingly easy. It'll be the first dementia-curing drug on the market, right? Seems like it's really getting fast-tracked because of that. But there's a lot riding on this one, right? It could finally cure Alzheimer's disease. That's right. Do you know how many dementia patients there are in Japan alone? A couple hundred thousand, at least. Maybe even in the millions? Right. As of 2012, there were 4.62 million. That many? By 2025, that number will increase to at least 7 million. Potentially up to 13 million, including at-risk patients. That's one in every nine people. Yikes. 
However, as a nation, we're already at capacity in caring for these patients. In many cases, people over 60 are stuck looking after their dementia-struck parents in their own homes. Worldwide, it's estimated there will be 135 million patients by the year 2050. It's staggering. In other words, AD9 could save the world. This could be a real miracle. I gotta say, uh, this is making me feel kinda bad about how we treated Kido-san back there. Director Kido will go down in history if we achieve this. A lot's changed in three years. Bastard's really made a name for himself. Be nice. Dr. Shono is right over there. Well, if you'll excuse me. Shono-san. Yagami-san? But uh, how did you get in here? Hey, calm down. I just want to talk. I, I I can't do that. Kido-san doesn't know you're here, does he? Is there a problem? Ah, oh, Ichinose-san. Uh, well, uh... I've never heard you raise your voice, Shono-san. Aren't you the guy from the lobby? My name is Ichinose. I'm here from the Ministry of Health, offering political support to AD9's development. Kirosan called you Vice Minister. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Pretty lofty for a Vice Minister. You can boss scientists around, but I'm not biting. So I see. Shonosan, please. I just need a few minutes to talk. We'll leave right after we're done, promise. I already told you I, I can't. Not without Kido-san here. I need you to tell me. Why did Shintani call you? Shintani? I've never heard that name in my life. This is important, Shono. You have to have some idea. Please, I, I don't. Now get out of here. I'm calling Director Kido. Do what you want. Just let me ask you one thing first. <sighs> After Shintani was murdered, the killer gouged out both of his eyes. Three other near-identical murders have taken place in Kamurocho recently. Are you aware of that, Shono-san? Of course I am. It's all over the news. And you still have no idea why Shintani called you? Nothing at all? No, I don't. Now please let me get back to work. What the...? What are you doing here? Kido-san. I believe I told you to leave. What about that didn't you understand? I wanted to ask about Shintani's call. About which I already said Shono doesn't know anything. And I needed to hear that from him, not you. Enough. Call security. We were just leaving. Come on, Hoshinoku. I'll be filing a complaint with the Bar Association. Under the Minister's name. The Minister? Of health? <laughs> That's right. Minister Kazami expects great things from AD9, and he won't tolerate distractions from your ilk. <sighs> I feel like we came up empty handed. <sighs> Why would Shintani-sensei have called Shono-san? Yagami-san? That wasn't the first time I've heard about Minister Kazumi. Huh? When was it, though? Who was talking to me about the Ministry of Health? It 
must have been Ayabe, when we were drinking over a tender. I definitely remember him mentioning Minister Kazumi. We were talking about how the Kyore clan ended up in Kamurocho. Apparently, they're being used as muscle for a construction company called the Kajihira Group. A while back, Chairman Kajihira himself was going around, laying the political groundwork for a Tokyo revamp project. And one of the people he met with was Naohisa Kazumi from the Ministry of Health. Huh. You'd think he'd go to the Ministry of Land, though. His project has nothing to do with health. What would he gain from meeting Kazumi? That's true. Do you think it has to do with our case somehow? I don't know. Depends on what the two of them are talking about. In that case, maybe our Kajihira expert can help us out with that. Who? Sugiura-san. He used to work for them, remember? Oh, yeah. So, you want to know how Kajihira and Kazumi are connected? Yeah. Any way you can find that out? Not really sure, but I'll give it a shot. Thanks. You're still at the ADDC, yeah? Just give me some time. I'll call you if I find anything. Yagami-san, um, I'm gonna head back to the office. I just got an email from Saori-san. Apparently, a journalist named Hattori barged into the office. Says he wants to interview you. Me? It sounds like he's looking into Shintani-sensei's murder, too. Anyway, I'll go ahead and drive him off. <laughs> You'll be Genda-sensei's ace attorney before you know it. Nah, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Honestly. Why? Too much responsibility for a guy my age, you know? <laughs> I, I think I make a much better sidekick for now. Okay. But when that gets old? I don't know that it will. Being a professional sidekick for the rest of my life sounds okay to me. <laughs> I'll see you later. Hmm? Huh?
Yep. Ya odias al Turius. Y eso que nada más estás viendo el principio, deja que tú sigas la historia, van a haber más y más ganas de odiarlo.
てみろや、hey. よろしくな Ay, sí, con l a f i s e en v i t o pero sigue viendo la historia, sigue jugando ese juego, que esa historia se pone bien interesante. Eso tiene un plot twist. Sí, no, y lo peor es que fue él, bendito. Tú ahí bien inocente, ya tan inocente, y creyendo en Arturias, y en desgracia, o viene y la. Le mata el hermanito, coño. No te quiero chotear, no te quiero espoliar nada, pero algo tuvo que ver, algo tuvo que ver. This again. Vale. <risa> Qué tramposa.
Yagamishi. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Naturally. Yagamishi.
on. <laughs> huh? <laughs> this again. Yeah. <laughs> 
八神さんえー、っとあ,あ<笑>ああ<笑>あああああああありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。
Hmm. Nice.
Hello?
Stay down. Yagami-san. Hmm? Domo. Ano. Hmm. Yep.
いらっしゃいませ Back to it. ありがとうございましたいらっしゃいませ。ありがとうございました。いらっしゃいませ。ありがとうございましたHmm. <laughs> 
Really, guys? いらっしゃいませ。Back to it. Thank you very much.
ありがとうございました。いらっしゃいませありがとうございました
らっしゃいませありがとうございました
let's see. Got it. Excuse me. Yeah. Hmm.
guys. there. Nice. Almost there. That'll do it. おい、おい。ふざけてんとちゃうぞ。
stay down. Hey, you only saw. Out of the way! Really, guys?
Hey. Almost there. Nice. Almost there. Got it.
でいかれますそれでは出発いたします